So, it seems like we're on the cusp of a sort of renaissance for superhero video games. There's, of course, Insomniac Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, a Ninja Turtles game based on the last Ronin comic, a Black Panther game developed by Cliffhanger Studios, as well as Monolith's Wonder Woman, Rocksteady's Suicide Squad, and whatever James Gunn is cooking up when it comes to his interconnected universe. But there's one character that I think desperately needs the video game treatment, and that's none other than The Flash. This current generation of consoles has been boasting their SSDs and how the load times allow for faster movement, like with Spider-Man's web wings letting him fly across the map. And so it feels like a no-brainer to use that technology to let us play as the fastest man alive. And let's be honest, it's been tough for Flash fans lately. We could really use a win, okay? This video is brought to you by Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. If you're too busy to cook, but wanna make sure you're still eating well, Factor lets you skip the extra trip to the grocery store, the entire cooking process and the cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Choose from over 34 weekly dietitian approved meals, varying from calorie smart to protein plus and vegetarian options. Somebody like The Flash is a busy guy, and so he needs to get his nutrition as fast as possible, and Factor's meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is just heat and enjoy, and then you can get back to running around and fighting I'm joking, but in all seriousness, uh, I'm somebody that forgets to eat a lot of the time, and uh, by the time I realize it, I'm too hungry, and I have a hard time deciding what to eat, and that makes me take longer to eat, and that makes me hungrier, which makes the decision even harder, and it's just, it's a cycle and stuff, and it gets kind of frustrating. But with Factor, I know that I always have consistent meals that are good for me, easy to make, and more importantly, taste great. So not only has it been really great for my physical health, but also for my mental health. Factor is now owned by HelloFresh, who you may know I've worked with in the past, and the two services work really well in tandem with each other. Because some days I have the energy to cook, and some days I don't. And it's also super flexible. I can adjust my order size, split up an order to share with my partner, or even skip a week if I need to so there's no pressure. Be sure to hit a factor75.com or click the link down below and use code TROYOBOYO50 to get 50% off your first factor box. I tried to make it a 17% off coupon to fit with the channel branding, but they were very adamant about making sure this was a good deal. I'm so sorry, everybody. And thanks so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now, The Flash has been in some 2D games, Game Boy beat-em-ups, and plenty of fan projects, but back in 2007, Bottle Rocket Entertainment was developing a full-on 3D open-world Flash game for the PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii generation. The game was incredibly ambitious, especially for the time. The world of Central and Keystone City was huge, you could run up walls, do air tricks, and they even toyed with the idea of being able to phase through matter. It would have seen Wally West in his first year as the Scarlet Speedster after Barry Allen's disappearance into the Speed Force, learning more about his powers and facing off against various different famous Flash villains, and there was even going to be a multiplayer racing mode that would put you in control of a plethora of other DC Speedsters, including even Superman. The story was being written by comic writer Marv Wolfman of New Teen Titans and Crisis on Infinite Earths, and got decently far into its development before the game's publisher Brash Entertainment closed due to mismanagement and Bottle Rocket was forced to cancel the production altogether. But since then, The Flash and superhero media in general have exploded in popularity and so I think that it's time that someone tries to take another crack at it. The Flash is an amazing character with so much of his story having been untapped in other media and if they were able to nail the feeling of running at super speed throughout a city, that could be really something special. Now I've seen some people say that super speed is an ability that just can't be done justice in a video game medium and to those people I say, what the fuck are you talking about? Literally one of the most famous video game characters is a little blue guy whose whole thing is just running really fast. And that's not to mention there's an entire genre of video games where you're put in a car and the only thing you have to do is go faster than everyone around you. Actually, now that I mentioned racing games, I think that the perfect developer to pair up with The Flash would be Criterion Games. Lately, they've been resorted to just working on the Battlefield franchise, but their work on Burnout is a perfect starting point for a Flash game. I'm not kidding when I say that Burnout Paradise is my favorite game ever. Like it is a straight up perfect game and anybody who worked on it deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. You're put in this massive open world and every stoplight has a different kind of challenge or a race where your only goal is to get from one side of the map to the other as fast as you possibly can. It sounds like that might get repetitive, but they designed this world so perfectly with shortcuts and hidden paths and ramps and secrets. Over time, you learn these shortcuts and you're rewarded for that knowledge of the world with new cars and events. On top of being able to go blazing fast through the city and trying not to wreck yourself in the process, it's a gameplay loop that I absolutely adore and honestly just swapping the car models for a little guy running in a red suit would get you like 90% of the way to make a Flash game. I'm serious, if anybody knows how to mod Burnout Paradise, that would like, ch that would change my life. I do think that whoever develops this hypothetical game would have to really understand the feeling of momentum and thrill of moving at super speed. I haven't played very much of Sonic Frontiers and I enjoyed what I did play of it, but my biggest issue with the game was that the core running mechanics just didn't feel very good to play. I assume it gets more fun over time with upgrades and just getting better at the game, but something as important as running in a Flash game needs to be satisfying from the start, just like web swinging in a Spider-Man game. There could 
of course be a boost or a bullet time mechanic. Maybe there are little pockets of energy throughout the map that give you a burst of speed like an infamous first light, a game that I think is criminally underrated, but that's neither here nor there. And just like in the canceled 2007 game, if you build up enough speed, maybe you could run up walls and launch yourself through the air to get to even more areas. The combat doesn't have to reinvent the wheel or anything. What Bottle Rocket was doing was really interesting. The studio was made up of a lot of former Sony San Diego employees, and the combat was a variation on the combat that they designed for the Mark of Cree, focusing more on crowd control and bouncing between enemies with different button presses. And I think that it'd be an interesting basis to start with. Maybe you could choose between bullet time or special moves, and that could give you different options in combat like a tornado or the infinite mass punch based on the enemy type. You could have to prioritize saving civilians, going into flash time to stop bullets before they hit them. Some enemies could be speedsters, and maybe you have to race across the whole city while you fight them, and they could ambush you while you're going from point A to point B. As for which version of the flash you would play as, I could go either way here. I tend to prefer Wally in most cases, but I do love Barry Allen when he's written the right way, and I think that the story that I have in mind would suit Barry and his strengths as a character a little bit more. If we really wanted to go with the actual best Flash, it'd be about Jay Garrick instead of the 1940s, but that guy is apparently not marketable enough for DC for some reason, so in the interest of the people that think I hate Barry Allen, let's just say it's Barry Allen. And of course, superhero games are nothing without their different costumes, and so the game could feature all the various suits throughout movies and TV, like John Wesley Shipp's costume, the various different Grant Gustin looks, the one decent movie suit and the two horrible ones, as well as the different looks that we've had in the comics throughout the years, and maybe even costumes based on the other speedsters of the universe. I really don't understand why it's so hard to make a good Flash costume in live action. It, it people, for some reason, everybody wants to reinvent the wheel. Just, just make it normal. Come on. I really don't like the, I really don't like the way he looks in that Suicide Squad game. And also he's evil. And also some people are saying that they want him to like reboot the universe. No, stop using the Flash as your like get out of jail free card to re, he's a character. He's a character. He's not just a way to reboot universes. I think it'd be really interesting to start with Barry in a fight with the rogues. Something happens with the Speed Force and Barry gets put into a coma for a couple weeks. And when he wakes up, the rogues have taken over Central and Keystone cities. And Barry could go through a little tutorial mission where we fight a villain, talk to Iris, maybe visit the Flash Museum, you know, just day-to-day -day Flash stuff. Before all of a sudden, the sky goes red and a massive explosion engulfs the entire city in a matter of seconds. Barry wakes back up in the hospital bed three days earlier. And on the bottom of the screen, we see a countdown until it happens again. Time loops are a game mechanic that I think are grossly underutilized. Games like Majora's Mask and Outer Wilds are some of my favorite games of all time. And the way that they use that mechanic to add so much life and personality to the world would be a perfect fit for a character like the Flash. Now you could always just make a game where you run fast, punch a few bad guys, stop some muggings and call it a day. But I don't really think that that's enough. The Flash above all else is constantly in a race against time. Despite being the fastest man alive, there's never enough time in the day for everything. And I would love to convey that feeling and that anxiety to the player. And what a better way to do that than with a class Groundhog Day scenario. Maybe all of the random crimes happen at a set time and place every day. NPCs could all have a set schedule. Certain side quests could maybe only be accessed at certain times before they're not available until the next loop. It might be a little overambitious depending on the size and the scale of the world, but Majora's Mask used it as a way to reduce the strain on the N64's hardware, so I don't think it's entirely out of the realm of possibility. And all the while while this happens, at random points, a portal could open and the reverse flash could show up, forcing you into a mini boss fight before he disappears again. It'd be fun if they used the Nemesis system from the Mordor games to have and remember all of your encounters and learn from them. Or maybe it could be played by another player in like a Dark Souls style online mode, I don't know. It could happen in the open world or while doing a side quest or even while fighting the final boss. Why would he be doing this? Because Eobard Thawn is the pettiest bitch in all of history and I love him to death. As for the plot, I've thought a little bit too hard about how I'd want to see it all unfold. I thought about making this a full on pitch video and going really into depth with everything, but then I realized that that's an insane thing to do and I should focus my time on videos that people actually want to see. But I think it'd be really fun if in different sections of the map there was a different member of the rogues like Captain Cold, Heat Wave, Mirror Master, Weather Wizard, Captain Boomerang, however many that they could fit into the story, that has a claim over the section of the map. And Barry has to take down each of the rogues and free those areas from their control with a quest line that could lead to a boss fight. And it all feeds into this greater mystery as to what caused this mysterious explosion and how we can stop it and break the loop. I think it'd be really cool if the game took pages from the recent Zelda games and let you fight each rogue in any order you wanted with different quests and missions leading up to the boss. Maybe letting you meet other members of the Flash family like Wally, Jay, Ace, Spark, Jesse quick, whoever else could work into the story. And once you beat the boss, those speedsters could be free in future loops and they could fight the rogues on their own, letting you spend your limited time doing other things and advancing the story. And you could explain it away with the speed force. You could explain everything away with the speed force. It's it, it's all magic, really. Let's be honest. And with each main villain you defeat, you could unlock a new ability like a double jump, throwing lightning, phasing through different kinds of walls and other tools that could help you throughout the future. I also think it'd be really cool if, again, just like the newest Zeldas, the game let you theoretically face the final boss immediately, assuming you know where to go and you have the means to get there. It wouldn't give you all the answers 
answers to the story and it will be hard as hell without any upgrades, but there's something so satisfying at the thought of a Flash game being able to be broken by speedrunners. I'm realizing now that there's a lot of Zelda DNA in this pitch. Maybe I, maybe I just want to play another Zelda game. As for the main villain, I would love it if it's Gorilla Grodd. There's been an astounding lack of gorillas in DC media as of late, despite them being the lifeblood of the universe as we all know, and I think that it's time we fix that. Maybe throughout the story and through Barry's investigation, we learn that Grodd's been working with Black Hole from the Rebirth comics, and they're experimenting with the Speed Force to create speedster enemies that we have to fight, and those experiments are what create the explosion that started this loop in the first place. There could be a story about Barry being exhausted, about constantly going through this loop and feeling like he's not making any progress, but how he knows that he's the the only person who has any chance at stopping this. I think that it's that determination and that hope that makes the Flash character stand out from other characters with super speed, and I'd really want to see that get highlighted. I'm not really sure how this could all work once you get to a post game and you beat the main story and you finish the loop and stuff like that. This is all just a weird idea that I've had for years. Burnout meets Majora's Mask might sound like an insane concept for a big budget superhero game, but that's kind of my point. If we're really going to be seeing such a big influx in superhero games over the next few years, we need to make sure that every single one of them stands out. For the longest time, it felt like every game was just trying to be Batman Arkham. Third person open world action adventure games with some basic stealth sections and a combat system that prioritized a combo meter and countering. It was a very good formula and the Arkham games are incredible for what they are, but it shouldn't be the be all end all for how superheroes should feel and play like. It's why Insomniac Spider-Man was so great. Even though it took a lot of the same DNA from the Arkham games, it put its own spin on it and used the gameplay to enhance the character. Because every superhero has strengths and weaknesses and the games that feature them should play to those strengths and create specific experiences for those characters. Batman should feel different from Wonder Woman, who should feel different from Black Panther, who should feel different from the Ninja Turtles, who should feel different from Spider-Man, who should feel different from The Flash. Variety in genre and tone and feel is vital in making sure that each of these characters are given the chance to shine that they deserve. Because we're already running the risk of burning ourselves out with superheroes in the movies, let's not let it happen with the games too. But what would you like to see from a game about The Flash, and what other character do you want to see get adapted into a video game? And if you like this video, be sure to like button and subscribe. Special thanks to 21 Escalators, Alter the Sting, Anz, Already Done It, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy, Chicken McDoofus, Cosmic Tragedy, Dan the Dreamer Show, Deco.py, DJ Ricky 08, Egan McFarlane, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Jonah, Crispy Raccoon, Corey's Not Fresh, Lime Spice XL, Pencil Fan, Simply Dan, Spectacular Clyde, Tim Newfeld, Choices by Rachel's Lame, Tyler Goodrich, Josh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, and Zero to Hero 148 for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you. You around.